Hello viewers, this is Wagda Ronald and in this video I'm going to take you through the solutions to A-Level Math Paper 1 of UNEB 2019 and this video I'm going to go take you through questions 5 to 8. So in the previous video I left you with these questions to try out and this video is mainly to do corrections to this video. So be, stay tuned and mark yourself and also make corrections where you went wrong. So we shall start with question 5. Question 5 said, find the equation of the tangent to the curve y equal to a cubed over x squared at the point p which is a over t a t squared. So, and they give it 5 marks. So, let's see how the 5 marks come about. So, we have this equation. The first thing to do is to get its derivative. So, dy dx, when I differentiate this, remember, a cubed is a constant, but x squared is not a constant. So, when I differentiate this, I'm going to come up with negative 2, a cubed over x cubed. And, but I know that from this point, at this point, my x is equal to a over t. So when I substitute for a over t where there is x, I'm going to come up with this part which is negative a to a cubed which is this numerator divided by a over t a, a over t cubed. And when I change this division sign to a multiplication sign, I have to get the reciprocal of this. So I come up with negative 2 a cubed times t cubed over a cubed. Now, this a cubed and this a cubed can cancel so that you remain with negative 2 t cubed, which is this. So, this is now the gradient of the tangent at the point P, which is a over t a t squared. So, now that I've got the gradient of the tangent, I can now go ahead to get the equation of the tangent. So, the equation of the tangent is given by changing y over changing x being equal to the gradient. Now, changing y, you, are, you consider a variable point x, y. That variable point x, y and this point which is given, shall say, changing y will be y minus a t squared over changing x, which is x minus a over t, being equal to the gradient which you have got here, negative 2 t cubed. When I cross multiply, I'm going to come up with this part. And when I collect like terms, I'll come up with y being equal to negative 2 2t cubed x plus 3at squared. So this is the equation of the tangent which was required. Now let's see how the marking can be done. Now this m1, the first m1 is for differentiating. So for you to get this part of dy dx, you get this mark, first mark of m1. And the second mark of m2 is for you to substitute. And this one is to simplify to get that then this other m1 is for you to get the equation of the tangent and a1 is to simply five so that's how the five marks can come about so you can mark yourself and make corrections where you went wrong or get five mark yourself five over five if you got everything correct so now we shall go to Question 6. Now, question 6 says, given that alpha plus beta is equal to negative 1 over 3 and alpha beta is equal to 2 over 3, form a quadratic equation whose roots are alpha over beta and beta over alpha. And it was 5 marks. So, let's see how the 5 marks can be got. First of all, you have to get the product of the roots, or the, or the given roots, which is, the roots are alpha over beta and beta over alpha. So, the product of these roots will be alpha over beta times beta over alpha. I think you realize that alpha cancels and beta also cancels, you remain with 1. Next is to get the sum of roots. Sum of roots is alpha over beta plus beta over alpha. Now, when I get the LCM, LCM is alpha beta. Now, alpha beta divided by beta, you'll get alpha, and alpha times alpha, you'll get alpha squared. Similarly, alpha beta divided by alpha will give you beta, and beta times beta will give you beta squared. 
Now when I simplify this numerator, I'll come up with alpha plus beta squared minus 2 alpha beta. So you may be wondering where this comes about. Let us first see how it comes about. We already know that alpha plus beta squared is equal to alpha squared plus 2 alpha beta plus beta squared. Now what we are going to do, keep these ones this side and take alpha 2 alpha beta this side. You'll come up with alpha beta everything squared minus 2 alpha beta. So you'll end up saying that alpha squared plus beta squared will be equal to alpha plus beta everything squared minus 2 alpha beta. So that is where this expression comes from. Now that we know this, we shall come and see that first of all, alpha plus beta is negative 1 over 3. So where there is alpha plus beta, put there negative 1 over 3. And we also know that alpha beta is equal to 2 over 3. So where there is alpha beta, put there 2 over 3, div everything divided by alpha beta, which is 2 over 3. Now when I simplify the whole of this in the box bracket, I'll come up with negative 11 over 9 and for you to change this division sign to multiplication sign you you have to get the reciprocal of this which is 3 over 2 now the, when i simplify further i'm going to come up with negative 11 over 6 so this is now the sum of roots and this is the product of roots now that you have got the sum and product you can get the equation which is required from the formula that equation is given by x squared minus sum of roots times x plus product being equal to 0. So our sum is negative 11 over 6 and product is 1. When I simplify further, I'll come up with 6x squared plus 11x plus 6 being equal to 0. Now this is the equation which was required. Now let's see how the marking can be done. First of all, for you to get this product, you get that bonus mark. And for you to express this, to get this expression, that is a method mark. Then to get, to substitute, this M1 is for substituting the whole of this. Then the B1 is for getting the sum. Then A1 is here, is marked at this point. So whether you, sim you can simplify or you stop, at, you stop here, you will still get that A one but it's advisable to simplify so now we shall go to question seven question seven says find the area enclosed between the curve y equal to x squared two x squared minus four and the x axis so they have five marks so we are going to see how those marks can come about so maybe let's first see the sketch of the curve. So this is a sketch of the curve. I think you already know this from that when the coefficient of x squared is positive, the curve will have a minimum point. Now these are the intercepts. Let's see how they come about. So the first thing to do is to get the intercepts at the x at the x-axis, y is zero. Therefore, when y is zero, it means that the whole of this is equal to zero, which is this part. And when I factorize, I'll come up with this now this one means that 2x is equal to 0 or x minus 2 equal to 0 now when 2x is equal to 0 we, can, we are going to come up with x being equal to 0 and when x minus 2 is equal to 0 we're going to come up with x equal to 0 so that is where these values are coming from the two, 1 and the 2 now and the area they want is the area enclosed by the x axis and the curve so the shaded part is the area which is required now let us see how that area can be got first of all you know that integral of 0 to from 0 to 2 now that 0 to 2 are these limits 0 to 2 of the given curve with respect to x when i integrate the given curve with respect to x from 0 to 2, I'm going to come up with this part, which is, so when I integrate 2x squared, I'm going to come up with 2 over 3x cubed. And when I integrate 4x, I'm going to come up with 2x squared. But don't forget the limits. Next, we'll be substituting the limits. When I substitute the upper limit, I'm going to come up with this bracket. And when I substitute the lower limit here, I'm going to come up with 0. And when I simplify, I'll come up with negative 8 over 
3. What does that mean? It means that the required area is 8 over 3 square units below the x-axis. It is below because of this negative value. If this value was positive, it means the required area will be above the x-axis. But now that it's negative, it will be below the x-axis. Now let's see how the marking can be done. So the first mark M1 is for this part of factorizing and the second mark is for getting the intercepts. Then the third mark is for integration, fourth mark is for substituting the limits and A1 is for getting the area which is 8 over 3 below the x axis. So you can mark yourself and make corrections where need be. Now we shall go to question 8. Question 8 says, given that chu is chu equal to root of a t minus 0.1p and e being equal to negative d chu dp multiplied by p over chu, find e when p is equal to 600 and they want you to and they give it 5 marks. So let's see how the 5 marks come about. So when p is equal to 600, we shall realize that chu, now we, are, we put here 600 and so that we can get the chu. So chu will be equal to root of 20. But I know that chu is equal to this without before I substitute p. And when I square it, I want to differentiate, but for you to differentiate easily, it is better if first square both sides. So when I square both sides, I'm going to come up with two, 2 squared being equal to a t minus 0.1 p. So when I differentiate 2 squared with respect to p, I'm going to come up with 2 chu d chu d p. I think you remember that in implicit functions. Being equal to when I differentiate 8, uh, 8 is a constant, so when I differentiate it becomes 0. And when I differentiate 0 point, negative 0 0.1 p, I'll come up with negative 0 0.1. Then when I make the chu dp the subject, I'll come up with the chu dp being equal to negative 0.1 over 2 chu. But when p, there are, but we know that when p is equal to 600, chu is equal to root 20. What does that mean? It means that now e, remember e was given by this expression, therefore I'm going to substitute e is equal to negative d chu dp multiplied by p over 2. Negative is here. This negative is here. And d chu dp is negative 0 0.1 over 2 chu. Then p over 2 is this. Now I'm going to substitute for chu and for p. So when I put chu where there is chu, I'm going to put there root 20. This is root 20 and also this, the root 20. And where there is p, I'm going to put there 600. Now when I use the calculator to simplify this, I'll come up with 3 over two and that was the value that was required. Now let's see how the marking is done. So this bonus mark is for you to get the corresponding value of chu when p is equal to 600 and this mark is for you to differentiate. So when you differentiate correctly you get that mark and when you simplify you will come up with that third mark. Now the m1 is for this substitution so substituting the whole of this gives you that m1 then a1 is for you to simplify to get that value so basically that's how the five marks can come about in such a question so i believe you have made corrections where you went wrong and also marked yourself if you got a hundred percent that is very good and if not you can still progress now i'm going to leave you with three other questions but these questions will be section b questions and that is question 9 to 11 still in the same year so let's get started
so those are the three questions you are going to try out and in the next video we shall also see the solutions to those questions so that you can mark yourself and see your progress but please if this video has been good to you subs don't forget to subscribe if you are new to this channel and also if you know of any friend or any student you can share the link to him or her so that we all let's sell as a family